afternoon, Sergeant Major. Yeah, how you doing, Brooks? Doing all right, sir. Doing all right. Uh, I'm actually at my home base today, and I've got my got my recorder working, got my cameras up, and I thought maybe you'd spend a little time with me today. Uh huh. Um, this is just from my own personal reference, and and how it may play out in the book is important. Is why I'm going to ask the following. Can you fill a few? Uh, can you fill a few questions today? Sure. Okay. Now, based on our previous conversations, I was under the assumption that you may have been with the Fifth RCT in Korea in 1950. Is that accurate? Twenty Third Infantry Regiment. Twenty Third Infantry Regiment. Uh huh. Okay. When did you go into Korea? Nineteen fifty one. What month? I'm sorry. What month, do you recall? Yeah, month of uh, February. February? And the reason I remember that is because the 14th of February was my first combat and it was, that's my mom's birthday. On Valentine's Day? Mm -hmm. Wow. February the 14th, with Chip Young Me. Chip Young Me? And you were just a PFC at that point? Just a private, I just got in there. That was my first day. My second day that I got there on the uh, morning of the 13th, and by the 14th was the first combat that we had. Now, a lot of those guys in the early part of the Korean War uh, were kind of lacking military training. I'm curious, how much did you receive? Well, what now? Um, to, uh, basic training? Basic and AIT, yes, sir. Four weeks. Four weeks from uh, January the third. Four weeks, and then immediately, and there was accelerated infantry basic North Fort Hood, Texas. No, uh, there was no PX, no goddamn soda, nothing. Just four weeks of day and night training, and then put on a train down to Fort Lewis, Washington. And Fort Lawton, and that's where they loaded our gear with the upshore, USS Upshore, and then them to Korea. Yep. How do you spell the name of that ship? Upshore. U P S U R E. U S P S U R. Upshore. Yep. Okay. All right. Cool beans. Uh, your first encounter with Sam Maradona was actually on the on the ship coming home. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Your first encounter with Sam Aradondo was on the ship coming home, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was the month of December? I think so, yes. Probably, my God, it's been... It's 51, 49, 68 years. 68? I could be a week off. It's... I'm not that clear on some of those. That's some fine. Of those papers, give me a break. No worries, sir, no worries. 68 years is a hard thing to call, bring back. Yeah, but it was... Uh, came back in... Uh, November 52. My God, it was 10 and a half months that we spent on that tour. 10 and a half. Would you happen to know what Sam was doing at the time that you, right before he got to you on the ship? No, he, uh, he was already a, a sergeant first class. All right. And uh, when I came back and got on the ship, I was a sergeant first class. So they got us a room together. Nice. And then we started talking. He says, boy, what are you doing with all that wreck? I said, well... You know, in my groups, you're not going to believe what I'm going to tell you, but this is the truth. Go right ahead, sir. For about three months, our first sergeant was 18 years old. That's what was left out of the unit. His name was Fred Fowler from uh, Arlington County, Kentucky. Wow. Never forget him. Wow. And at that time, uh, with that situation, uh, if you, you had a rifle squad, that captain gave you a little square piece of cardboard.
for form they made to be SFC so and so A6 now only at that time because that, as you might know at that time the highest rank was E7. Yes. Yeah. So when I then when we got on the ship, they mean what was on the ship? USS Man, I think man, M A N N, I think. On the way back, and, and uh, we got the room because of that. the only distinction, uh, Brooks, at that time, almost everybody was coming back with rank, so we had to clean our compartments. And Sam was the senior, so he was uh, department, uh, a compartment at COIC, you know, for cleaning, you know, all that stuff, and uh, got a room with them, and then. Uh, we are on a ship, and we started talking, and we found out he was from Rio Grande City. So we started, and, and he says, uh, boy, I'm going to teach you how to get over on these people. So he says, come on with me. So we went down the stairs to the bakery. And the guy, the, oh, the chief baker there, got, got a real hard nose on us. He says, the hell you want? Boy, Sam says, we don't want a goddamn thing. We've been sent here. If you don't want us, the hell with you. Come on, Escobedo. He says, no, 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 wait a minute. What, what? He says, we were sent out here for detail. He said, well, come on in here. So we sat down and gave us some coffee, gave us a piece of bread, fresh bread, you know. For, they baked every day for the soap, for the troop ship, for the sailors, you know, for the people that ran the ship. But for us, it was two, three days old, you know. Right. So he, he taught me how to shine the boots. Remember the old uh, combat boots with the two belt buckles on the left? Remember? Okay. Then he taught me that and then gave me close order drill upstairs at night by ourselves. To bring you up close to... Close order drill. And, and he's the one that taught me a lot of things, you know, because hell, I didn't die. Imagine you at the both private four weeks of accelerator, infantry basic, and boom, you're gone. Right. But it, it was, nobody even had an idea, unless you were there, of how screwed up the Med was in Korea. It was a mess. Total train wreck. You got a sign there. You want you fell off a ship and they fall off. In front, ten men front, a hundred men. Okay, it says your last names start with A, B, C, or D. Move to the left. You're going for the first cavalry division. E, F, G, H. Go to second infantry division. That's how they assign you. He says, you see that lieutenant over there? Is the individual responsible for you from now on move out. We had uh, books. We even had a doctor of anesthesiology in one of our rifle squads. That's how bad it was. I mean, everybody, there was no, uh, well, I'm an, I'm an engineer, I'm artillery now. You got them infantry, that's it. It was a mess, bro. You would never, ever even know that we have an organized military. It was a screw-up, a major one. Not until Ridgeway got there, then things started to change. But when we had the other people, bad news. And it was, and we, we had about, at one time we had 86% casualties in the, in the regiment. 86%. Wow. 50% was weather based because we were doing uh, summer gear on and then 10, 12 below zero sometimes. Damn. It was survival. We dug more holes than a goddamn hole. Did you get winter gear when you came off ship? They went up. Did you get your winter gear before you left the ship? When did you get that? Uh, the, the winter gear that came uh, about... Uh, I'll tell you when winter gear came, in July. Wow. 
Wow. And, and Korea gets hotter than the son of a bitch in July. Right. That's where they, they had a place we call Mickey Mouse Corners. That's where they have gave us the goddamn winter gear in the summer. All winter, we went on, luckily, we had some overcoat. Remember the old woolen coat that we had that smelled like a dog when they got wet, remember? Right. <laughs> and if we were lucky, we'd get uh, overshoes. That's the only thing that kept a lot of us from frostbite. Well, that was my... That was my next question. Did you you did get the overshoe though before you left the ship? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, right now I need heat. I gotta have blankets to sleep at night. Right now, mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm outside right now, I gotta get a jacket. The average temperature this week is 93 degrees, and you still need a jacket. Yeah, I, I, I still wear a jacket. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sam, Sam was the same way. clear about that. I'm, I'm not active duty. I was born in 62 and, uh -huh. and I've, been uh -huh. I've been researching the Korean War since uh, about 2014. Siberian tiger territory in the northeast. Yes, sir. To give an idea yes, of how cold. Yes, sir. That's, that, we were, I think it was two, two or three times they got it 22 below zero. Below zero. Wow. I tell you, uh, oh man. And, and, ne and negative 30 on the Chosen Reservoir. That's. That's the bulk of my understanding of the Korean War is the first year. And uh, uh -huh. I would say my wheelhouse is the Chosen Reservoir. I probably know more about that one particular battle than uh, the grand sum total of the Korean War. Okay, so then you then you reading and understanding the weather. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That, that, was, that, that was her enemy, Brooks. Not, we, well, of course we got into firefights, of course. But that was the enemy. You never could say, well, not only that now, we leave those sea rations for weeks at a time. Couldn't even build a goddamn fire. <laughs> so you can imagine, no, no, no. Uh, this is, I've been asked there, uh, hey, Escobedo, how come you guys ain't got no pictures? What in the hell are you talking about? Right. Let me ask you a question about the sea pack. Is, okay. it, is that the one where you boil the whole bag and it has like five different things in it? Mm -hmm. That's like the worst one that they, they offered you, wasn't it? Yes. As, yes. Opposed, as opposed to the A or the B or, or an MRE? Okay. Mm -hmm. I had to find a picture of you uh, in your Kentucky Wildcats sweatshirt. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't think I want to make you mad at me, let's put it that way. <laughs> It's a good photo for you. Oh, did you see from the from the uh, newspaper? 
Uh, yeah, from the Enterprise? Yeah. Yeah, that one. That's the one I found. I found it last night, as a matter of fact. Yeah, well, they came over here to talk to me and interview me, and this, the, the, the girl kept asking me, well, where are your pictures from, from Chris, ma'am? Please don't ask me that anymore. You can't ask me three times, and I'm telling you, we had no goddamn cameras. Right. Or no but, time. Can I take you to the Battle of Chip Yong Ni? Sure. What company, what company were you with? I was the second recon company. Second recon? Out of the regiment. Okay. Second recon company out of the, regi out of the regiment, yeah. Uh -huh. What, which, uh -huh. which battalion was that? Or did it, did it matter? I'm sorry? What battalion was that made up out of, or does it matter? Yes, sir. No, it was just like a tank company. 
made for a uh, for a uh, the regiment. Okay, yeah. So it's kind of separate. Okay. I'll follow you. Uh, yeah, they were like, yeah, uh, like we had the uh, recon, uh, uh, recon second recon company. We had the seventy. Ah, well, it was, no, six tank battalion, I think. But there, there's, there's, there's separate units, you didn't break them down. Understood. So, so the, the, if there's an operation, uh, the recon company was just a recon unit, like recon battalion, the recon platoon. Remember later on they had recon platoons, remember? Yes, sir. And some of the, the, the battalion who had recon platoon, well, the regiment had a recon company. I'll follow you. So they would, so they would detach a platoon from the company to one of the, to the either the 9th or the 38th, which are the two regiments out of the 23rd Division. The 23rd composed of the 9th, the 23rd, and the 38th. How is so your... they would break us down, so we would work a week or two with one of the regiment, one of them, one, uh, um, battalion or another one, so they change your around just like they do a, a recon platoon now. I understand. I understand. Would, would you be able to locate your position inside the uh, Chip Yong Ni perimeter on, in February? Sure. Alright, would you be on, I mean you were totally encircled according to the map I'm looking at from the 13th and 14th of February? Yeah. And from the north, the, the company's lined up. Uh, and you, 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 would you believe, you know who saved their butts? Who's that? The first cab. Oh, really? Yep, the 5th Recon, the 5th uh, Regiment out of the 1st Cavalry Division is the one that brought, we were almost out of supplies and running low on ammo. The only reason is they would drop him. But sometimes the dunk wind would chip, so they drop. They made the drop in one area, and it flowed 500 uh, meters away, so the books got it too. Yeah, that so, happened uh, quite frequently. So if, if you give a chance, uh, I'll be able to. I'll, I'll try to start remembering, see some be prepared for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, Tiger. Anytime. Can uh, Can we go back to Sam a little bit? Are you out of town? Sure. sure, sure, go ahead. So, you were a tanker, Sam was a tanker, you're both on the ship coming back in December 51. Uh, yes. Did Sam ever no. speak of what he did from November of 50 to uh, his time on the no. ship? No, no, no. Okay, that's... And I don't remember the patch on his shoulder. Damn it, I'm sorry, I don't remember. Uh, the patch on the shoulder. Well, it should have been the... He was on the line now. He was on the line. He was no, no uh, cook or uh, quartermaster or nothing like that. He was, he was on the line just like us. Well, his, his patch should have been the 2nd Armored Division, I would think. No, no, no. 2nd Armored Division did not, was not in Korea. Wasn't, I know, but he was part of the cadre at Fort Hood. Wasn't the 6th Tank Battalion attached to uh, the 2nd Armored Division out of Fort Hood? Yeah, but it was... Uh, I think so, because I didn't come back to, to, to Hood until 54. Okay. Yeah, because, I'll tell you what, when, when I came back... Let me, just a minute, let me give you this quick. Sure, go ahead. I came back, and I was hit on the leg. So we was in San Antonio in the hospital, in the hospital there, and uh, um, the there was a major that come in, and I was here. I was single, wild, and um, he said, "Does anybody want to go to Germany?" So me and my two buddies sitting on the table said, "Yeah, man, let's go. Let's go to Germany. Hell with it. They, let, they got good-looking German women down there. So let's go." We volunteered. He says, "Okay." You got 10 days, no charge, leave, report to Fort Polk, Louisiana. Boom. So we went to Fort Polk, Louisiana. 
It was a 40 acres open field. They had an M46 tank. And an instructor, he says, get in the driver's seat. There's the, there's the, the uh, gear, there's the, the magneto to start a tank. Drive it. Okay, so we drove around about 15 minutes. It says, you're damn tankers now. <laughs> That's why I ended up in, in Germany in 1950, late 52, I think December. Now, did so you, I didn't stay long in the States. Did you ever end up in the same battalion as Sam? Okay. Because I don't know when when he came back, where did he get assigned to? I think he went went to Hood, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he went back to Hood for about a year, and uh -huh. the, and according to Miss Kate, he went back to Korea in '53, if I got my data correct. Uh, I I'll, wonder. It. And uh, and when he came back, he came back again. He came up in Knox. And that's when they set up housekeeping at Fort Knox. Uh huh. And then, uh -huh. He, then he did his first tour of Germany, came back to yeah. Knox, and did his second tour of Germany. Okay, no, I, I know about his tour there in Freeburg, like I mentioned to you before. Right. And I don't know what other unit he was in, because I lost contact with him for years. Okay. And, um,. Oh, I know. I don't know because, like I told you, I gave you the name of that driver, the tank driver. Mr. Britt. Yes, sir. Yeah. Witt. Did you have a chance to talk to him? No. In fact, I was going to call him after I got off the phone with you today. But I've got all day to interview, so we're good. Give him a call. I think he's probably home now. And, and let him give you, now he'll give you a complete background where he came from and where Ben came from. I mean, where Sam came from. Okay. He'll be able to tell you where he was assigned in the States and when he went to Germany to Friedberg. Okay. You can get a lot of information from Ben because they were together. In fact, like I told you, he was the same driver. So, in what in what year did you catch up with Sam again? When did, you said you went years without, and then you got back with him. You know when that was. Here at Fort Knox. Okay. Were you both trainers at that time? I'm sorry? Were you both training, trainers at that time? I, I, I don't know. I was with the, uh, with the armor school. Well, that's what I'm referring to, correct? The armor school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was there, a, was there a General Paul Robinette over the armor school when you got back? Robinette, I remember that name. Yeah, I think I got a letter from him, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. I, I think you and uh, let me see the the sixth the second of the sixth cab squadron was there in Fort at the Fort Knox or third of, third of the sixth or something. Now I bet you that's where he was because that was one of the recon squadrons that we had here at Fort Knox. Okay. One of the active duty combat uh, 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 outfits. Well, Sam, Sam had started with the 1st Armored in um, Ireland after leaving Fort Knox with Robinette and CCB. And then, uh -huh. he, then he did the North African campaign and the Italian campaign. Uh, uh -huh. Robinette was injured at the end of the North African campaign. And, he uh -huh. would, and I think Colonel Gardner stepped up. And Colonel Gardner put him in a tank in Naples, Italy. So uh -huh. Sam made the first, the second battle of Monte Cassino. Uh, he took, he took, okay, he took Rome in, in June fourth that year. Mm -hmm. Cross yep. the cross the Arno River, the Apennine Mountains, uh, yep. the Po yep. River Valley. He was into the mess. I tell you, uh, Sam would have been. Sam would have been. Would have been all the way up in the grades if he would have. But you know. I don't know if he did it personally, but Sam was poor thing. I mean, God bless him, but like I told you, he told us, God damn it, the Army wants to promote me to know where I am. And, okay, Sam, so. Yeah, I think, he, I, think he spent, I think he spent 11 years in grade after World War II. Yes, yes, indeed. And because at that time, the Army started looking at what your education was, whatever it is, been. Anybody had, you know. Yes, sir. And, and uh, then they started the them uh, uh, scaling down of the troops. And uh, if uh, I tell you, uh, there was, we already talked about 
forget about how miserable the time was when Eisenhower took over, but that's another. Yeah, where, uh, where he froze grade for three years? If, if you, yeah, if you get time today, babe, go wait now. I know his home probably. Will do. And I'll tell you what, I'd be ready to, to copy because it, he's got the world of it on it. Well, that's, that's why I record, because you guys talk faster than I can type or write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So go ahead and give me a book, babe, and see what happens. Well, let me, let me ask your permission. Since I'm writing a book and some of this information may be used for the book, uh, uh -huh. I, need, I need to get your permission to, uh, to be able to record and save this stuff. Uh, uh -huh. Do I have that permission, sir? Sure, sure. Okay. And like I said, when you're ready to come over so I can give you what I can remember uh, and not start to big backtrack in my mind of maybe the hills and the, the happened and the areas and everything, okay? I would love to do that. Uh, one more question. Okay, one more question, I'll let you go. Uh, I have a video going, it just shows the screen of my TV and me going through the computer. I also showed that picture of you on the screen in your UK sweatshirt. Uh -huh. Would you mind if I shared this, this video on YouTube? No, no, no problem, babe. No problem. You're the man, sir. Don't you ever change. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bro. No problem, then. God bless you, sir, and I'll give it to you soon. Okay. Yeah, now did all you guys uh, serve with the, or were part of the uh, Mason's Lodge? The Masonic Lodge? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Does that include wit? No, 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 no. Okay. All right, sir. The chef was master of the lodge at one time out of Stevensburg, Kentucky here. And then I think he, be he became the, uh, the minister, the, the preacher guy, what do they call that? No, he was the, he was the master. He was the master. Wow. Oh yes, yes. I learned something new every day, sir. <laughs> yeah, he was the master of the lodge. Oh yes. It's fantastic. And, and very productive. Very. Oh, you know, we did a whole bunch of stuff that the, for the people around. We went on on Thanksgiving uh, award of turkeys to the poor families. We passed out uh, a whole bunch of stuff. We, we did. We did a lot of work. That's, yeah. fa that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, sir, I'll let you go. Okay, listen, Amy, you're around here sometime, drop by and get something to drink up at the house, okay? Will do, sir, we will do. You got my address? Yes, sir. All right, and you got my number? Yes, sir. Okay, you close by, give me a fast buzz. All right, man. <laughs> okay, Tiger, take care and God bless. God bless, you have a good day. <laughs>